Gonzo. Yep. Okay. Hey, what's going on with this? Are you hearing all this? Zach, it's a little tight. Like... Okay. Got it. Hearing a bunch of stuff. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, Fans, if the pinnacle hit it here sign in center field is hit during tonight's All-Star game, we'll randomly select one ticket lo location and that fan will win $1 million. The pinnacle hit it here sign on the facing of the 400 level in dead center field. So and the new stars the powerful and the fleet for each in his own way there is an inner fire Braves started to Gonzo, I'm hearing the PA announcer in my IFB. my best friend she's here tonight <laughs> huh we can't we better go to Cox and come back to him Cox wants to do it then okay Gonzo or John, I got a little problem. Uh, the PA announcer, every time he talks, it blasts me away in my IFB, and they say they can't do anything about it. Uh, yeah, because it, it is so loud, beyond loud, and there's no way I'll be able to think with this guy talking like that. Maybe he won't talk during the pregame show. Can we just get him not to talk during the pregame show? Yeah, maybe just get him not to talk during the pregame show. That would that would be helpful. Dan, tell Dan Baker. Okay. Hello. Pop this up there if you would. Hello. Yeah, pop it up, will you? Pop up the shot. Put up the shot. All right, go in tight here. Let's, Gab, you got to look at this and see. Well, then. You look adorable, Bob. Thank you. Who is that? It's Hannah. Hannah, thank you so much. <laughs> you do. You but Hannah, you know, Hannah, you know, it's 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 a hair thing, Hannah. I know, but it looks great. Oh, Hannah. <laughs> Hannah, are you taking the are you taking the charter with us, or are you going back to Connecticut? No, babes, I gotta go home. I gotta I gotta pick up my dry cleaning. Oh, come on, Hannah. Hey, I gotta check on the hey, kids. In the next contract, in the next contract, Hannah, a valet to take care of that. <laughs> don't don't. Don't touch his hair. Right, don't touch the hair, Gab. I'll have you ejected. <laughs> injected. 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 Believe me. <laughs> it's time for that in Atlanta. You are sweating. 
All right. You'll do it just before I come on, and that's it. Gonzo? 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 The commissioner and Mrs. Selig want to say hello to Euchre. I have uh, conveyed it. The commissioner and Mrs. Selig say hello to Euchre. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Where's, for hello to where's that water? Okay. Hey, hey, Jim, ask, ask Bud, ask Bud his, his reflections on Meet the Press. Ask him about Meet the Press? How does it look to him in retrospect? Bob wants, Bob wants to know if you're happy with Meet the Press. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, I am. Hi, Joe. How are you? Tom? I am very happy with it. Yes. He was very happy, Bob. Yeah, we just don't have any runners in place here, so I'm just trying to get some people set up. Thank you, guys. The Perennials and the New Stars, the Powerful and the Fleet. For each in his own way, there is an inner fire. Braves starter John Smoltz, a kid from Michigan, a Tiger fan, dealt from Detroit to the Braves early in his career. And for years, he toiled in the shadow of Cy Young Award winners Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin. But this year, Smoltz is the major league leader in victories. Wade Boggs. Never the golden ring, always the silver slugger. The 300 average automatic year in and year out. And despite postseason heartbreak in Boston and New York, Boggs remains the timeless hitting machine. After a season of football at Auburn, Frank Thomas realized hardball was his game and the big herd has become a dominant force. His power now legendary, his slugging percentage ranking him among the all-time greats, a triple crown seemingly always within his reach. The National League's top vote getter Mike Piazza was the 1390th player drafted in 1988, a Dodger favor to his father, a friend of Tommy Lasorda. Forced to become a catcher, he became the Rookie of the Year in 1993 and now is the National League's leading hitter. For nearly two decades, Ozzie Smith has dazzled baseball with skill and style. The Wizard, an all-star tradition, has set the standard that will forever draw comparisons. In this, his 15th and final all-star appearance, a generation of stars celebrates with him. The all-star game is next. It's the 67th renewal of baseball's All-Star Game on a muggy night at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. It rained about an hour ago. They pulled the tarp onto the field. It's been taken off now. 
no rain falling at the moment. There is a chance of rain in the forecast. Game time temperature about 80 degrees as the National Leaguers who have won two in a row on the heels of a six game American League winning streak play host to the junior circuit. Hi everybody and welcome to the All Star Game. I'm Bob Costas joined in a bit by Bob Euchre and Joe Morgan in a year that's taking on historic dimensions in terms of home runs and run production. Most of the game's greatest hitters are here but a few are not including now the White Sox first baseman Frank Thomas. He has a sprained left foot and he told the American League manager Mike Hargrove a couple of hours ago he would not be able to make it scratched from the starting lineup replaced by Mo Vaughn of the Red Sox for the American League. So add Thomas now to the names of elected starters Ken Griffey of the Mariners Tony Gwynn of the Padres and Matt Williams of the Giants. All of them will not be able to play in this All Star game. We'll talk more about that and we'll also get to the pitching pairing in just a bit. But first, the pregame show. And for that, down to the field and Hannah Storm. Hannah. Thanks, Bob. Well, the last time the Phillies hosted an All Star game was back in 1976. And it was that year that a small seven year old Philadelphia boy attended his first baseball game. He sat in the stands here and he dreamed of someday becoming a major leaguer. Well, tonight he returns as the leading vote getter in the National League. And we will talk with Dodgers All Star Mike Piazza when we return. Keep it tight. You got it. Very, very quick. Yeah, it was really cute. Really cute. You can see him on the screen. It's like you and your brother Vince. That's right. Oh yeah, at that, sure. Sure. Sure, we can keep it short. I already told him. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium and a young boy who attended many games here. That's Mike Piazza with his brother Vince. They grew up in the Philadelphia suburb of Phoenixville given the Dodgers jerseys by their close family friend Tommy Lasorda and given some hitting tips by Hall of Famer Ted Williams. That's when Mike was 12 years old. They had an indoor batting cage at the house and apparently uh, some of that support paid off way back then uh, as Mike a four time all star joins us now. What are your emotions of returning to this ballpark. I'm really I'm just kind of numb. I can't really describe it. I'm just in awe and uh, to see all family and friends here is, is a great thrill for me. Um, I'm having a blast. What was your first game like when you came here 20 years ago. Well I, I just remember sitting way up in the 700 level somewhere and Mike Schmidt who's in the locker room hitting two home runs and uh, again I mean if if 
you know, it's a cliche, but dreams do come true. And I remember dreaming about becoming a major league player and working hard to finally get here. It's just an overwhelming feeling. I know that your close friend and also your manager, Tommy Lasorda, recently suffering from a heart attack. He's sure to be watching the game tonight. Have you talked to him, and is he going to be able to return? He's doing, uh, doing a lot better, and he's starting to get his appetite bad. We expect him back soon, so we wish him well. Okay, great. Have a wonderful time tonight. Right. Thank you very there much. There will be a large contingent of fans cheering, of course, for Mike Piazza. The other player getting the loudest ovations here at the vet is Cal Ripken, Jr., the all-star from the Baltimore Orioles and, of course, the owner of baseball's consecutive games played streak. However, Cal suffering a scary moment just about an hour and a half ago. We're going to give you the details on that and speak with Cal when we return. Okay, great. Well, he's here. Okay, we got footage of the incident. <laughs> why I came on the interview today? No, no, no. Actually, we had you stand the long before. No, no. Yeah. Do you actually have the actual hit? Yeah, we do. We have the the blow. So I'll ask you how you're, you know, how you're doing. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Great. Great. He, he can't believe we have this. I haven't seen this yet. You didn't see this? <laughs> frame by frame now. <laughs> oh, God. I bet he felt bad, Roberto. Did he? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> you this? It's a shiner no, tomorrow. I'm watching it. Do I have one coming in? No, you look good. You, you, you still look okay. <laughs> Up, my nose yeah. Oh, did it really? Oh, jeez. Yeah, you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 Welcome back to the All-Star Game. This happened about an hour and a half ago. That's Cal Ripken taking the American League team photo. And you see a White Sox reliever, Roberto Hernandez, slip on the platform here and inadvertently hit Cal in the nose. Of course, Hernandez are quite concerned as are Cal's Orioles teammates. Checking up on him there is uh, Brady Anderson and Robbie Alomar. And the 14-time All-Star joins us now. And uh, not the way we would have liked the streak to end there, Cal. <laughs> No, uh, I was trying to keep that hush hush, but I don't think you can do anything at the All Star game and not get it caught on film, uh, as we see right there. It looked like a vicious blow, didn't it? it? It certainly did. But now, how are you? The nose is broken, is that right? It was. I mean, how do you say this? I guess it simply, yeah, it was broken, but it was out of place, and whatever they do, they kind of twist it in and pop it back in. So it still might be a little crooked, but uh, it's better than it was. Actually, you look all right. Now, are you going to play tonight? You're fine to play? Most definitely. I, there was never a doubt. Okay, and looking back on the streak, and I understand you've never played with a broken nose, actually, so you will continue the streak with that broken nose, but have you had a chance to assess the impact that it's had on baseball? Um, I, guess, I guess I get to see it by the reaction of the fans on a daily basis, going to different cities. I'm still being uh, pulled in like I'm a hometown um, player to each city. It's, it, it, it's not like it used to be where you went in as an opposing player. Now it seems like you're part of the home team, so I think the impact... Uh, c continues now. It's a very positive thing, and I see it. I see it on a day-to-day, -day, visiting the different cities. Okay, we'll have fun tonight and stand in the front row next year when you get the team picture taken. <laughs> Thank you. Good advice. Okay. Now, uh, no pun intended, we're going to update you on a breaking story, and this from the NBA. What is believed to be the shortest lockout in sports history appears to be over. The NBA reaching a snag late last night in its negotiations with its players' union. One source close to those negotiations termed it a little posturing, a little shouting, the usual 11th hour finger pointing. The end result of that was that earlier today the NBA did lock out its players. However, less than an hour 
or later. They did reach an agreement on that, a new collective bargaining agreement with the players' union. That agreement is expected to be signed by the end of business. That's 5 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. However, in the meantime, both sides have agreed to a moratorium on any player transactions. That will be lifted at 5 p.m. on Thursday. So, after 5 p.m. on Thursday, the doors are open in the NBA for all of the free agent bonanza to begin. Shaq, Michael Jordan, and the rest can begin shopping their wares. So, once more, the NBA lockout, appending the signing by both sides of the new collective bargaining agreement, appears to be over. And back to business on the field here at the All-Star Game. One of the most special moments of any All-Star Game, the player introductions when we come back. Okay, I think I covered it. The posturing. Yeah. Welcome back. Okay. Good. Yeah. With 10 or more years of service, he managed the Orioles to six division titles, four American League pennants, and the 1970 oh, he's, he's World the best. Series championship. Yeah. A four-time All-Star manager, he'll be inducted into the Hall of Fame August 4th. Please welcome Earl Weaver. Tom, Tom's gone, so just cue me. Tom's over there. Huh? Gonzo, you may have to cue me because Tom's gone, okay? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, just cue me, Gons. Here you Yes, you got Welcome back. Time now for the player introductions at the 67th annual All-Star Game. Here's public address announcer Dan Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the 1996 American League All-Star Team. First, the trainers. From the Kansas City Royals, Nick Swartz. And from the Oakland Athletics, Larry Davis. The coaches from the Cleveland Indians, Toby Hara and Jeff Newman. Hi, Tom. All right. From the Chicago White Sox, Terry Bevington. From the Kansas City Royals, Bob Boone. And in the bullpen, also from the Cleveland Indians, Mark Wiley and Dan Williams. And now the American League All-Stars. From the California Angels, pitcher Chuck Finley. And pitcher Troy Percival. From the Chicago White Sox, elected but unable to play due to injury, first baseman Frank Thomas. Pitcher Roberto Hernandez. From the Cleveland Indians, catcher Sandy Alomar. Pitcher Jose Mesa. From the Detroit Tigers, third baseman Travis Freiman. From the Kansas City Royals, pitcher Jeff Montgomery. 
from the Milwaukee Brewers, outfielder Greg Vaughn. From the Minnesota Twins, second baseman dead. Chuck Knobloch. From the New York Yankees, pitcher John Wetland. Pitcher Andy Pettit. From the Oakland Athletics, first baseman Mark McGuire. From the Seattle Mariners, shortstop Alex Rodriguez. Catcher Dan Wilson. Infielder Edgar Martinez. And outfielder Jay Buhner. From the Texas Rangers, pitcher Roger Pavlik. From the Toronto Blue Jays, outfielder Joe Carter. And now, Tonight's starting lineup for the American League. First, the manager of the American League from the Cleveland Indians, Mike Hargrove. <laughs> Leading off from the Cleveland Indians, center fielder Kenny Lofton. Batting second from the New York Yankees, third baseman Wade Boggs. Batting third from the Baltimore Orioles, second baseman Roberto Alomar. Batting fourth from the Cleveland Indians, Left fielder, Albert Bell. <laughs> Batting fifth from the Boston Red Sox. First baseman, Mo Vaughn. <laughs> Batting sixth from the Texas Rangers. Catcher, Ivan Rodriguez. Batting seventh from the Baltimore Orioles, shortstop Cal Ripken Jr. Baltimore Orioles, right fielder Brady Anderson. Betting ninth from the Cleveland Indians, warming up in the bullpen, uh, pitcher Charles Nagy. And now, the 1996 National League All-Stars. Atlanta Braves, Jeff Porter. And from the Philadelphia Phillies, Jeff Cooper. The coaches from the Atlanta Braves, Jimmy Williams. Pat Corrales. And Ned Ghost. From the Philadelphia Phillies, Jim Fregosi. And also in the bullpen from the Atlanta Braves, Leo Mazzoni. And now the National League All-Stars. From the Atlanta Braves, pitcher Greg Maddox.
pitcher Mark Wallers. And pitcher Tom Glavin. From the Chicago Cubs, pitcher Steve Traxel. From the Colorado Rockies, infielder Eric Young. And outfielder Ellis Burks. From the Florida Marlins, outfielder Gary Sheffield. And pitchers Al Leiter and Kevin Brown. From the Houston Astros, first baseman Jeff Bagwell. From the Los Angeles Dodgers, pitcher Todd Worrell. From the Montreal Expos, shortstop Mark Gretzelonek. Outfielder Henry Rodriguez. And pitcher Pedro Martinez. From the New York Mets, catcher Todd Hundley. From the Philadelphia Phillies, pitcher Ricky Botalico. From the Pittsburgh Pirates, catcher Jason Kendall. From the St. Louis Cardinals, shortstop Ozzie Smith. From the San Diego Padres, elected but unable to play due to injury, outfielder Tony Gwynn. And third baseman Ken Caminetti. And now tonight's starting lineup for the National League. First, the manager of the National League from the Atlanta Braves, Bobby Cox. Leading off from the New York Mets, center fielder Lance Johnson. Batting second from the Cincinnati Reds, shortstop Barry Larkin. Batting third from the San Francisco Giants, left fielder Barry Bonds. Batting fourth from the Atlanta Braves, first baseman Fred McGriff. Batting fifth from the Los Angeles Dodgers, catcher Mike Piazza. Batting sixth from the Colorado Rockies, right fielder Dante Bichette. Batting seventh from the Atlanta Braves, third baseman Chipper Jones. Batting eighth from the Houston Astros, second baseman Craig Biggio. Batting ninth from the Atlanta Braves, warming up in the bullpen, pitcher John Smoltz. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1996 Major League Baseball Stars. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of the Canadian National Anthem by Canada's own Sarah McLaughlin. With glowing hearts, 
Please join Kelsey Grammer as he sings our national anthem. All-Star Game is next. We'll rejoin Bob Costas along with Bob Buecher and Joe Morgan for the first pitch right after these messages from your local station. Good job, Hannah. Can Hannah hear me? Hannah is gone. Hannah, Hannah's gone. Hannah, she's gone. All right. She did a fine job, and America thanks her for it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the pitcher's mound for tonight's ceremonial first pitch. These five Hall of Famers represent more than four decades of Philadelphia Phillies baseball 
and a combined 44 All-Star selections. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Baseball Hall of Famers from the Philadelphia Phillies. Number 36, Robin Roberts. Number 32, Steve Carlton. Number one, Richie Ashburn. Number 20, Mike Schmidt. And number 14, Jim Bunning. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium. First pitch of the All-Star Game just a few minutes away. And as we rejoin you from the booth, Joe Morgan is here along with Bob Euchre. One is a 10-time All-Star, a two-time MVP, and a Hall of Famer. The other is simply Mr. Baseball. To Euchre in a moment, but first, Joe, we'll talk about this all game long. But this outburst of power, it's been building for a few years, but this year, it's out of control. 27 is the record back in 1987 for most major leaguers with 30 or more home runs. At the present pace, 64. Yes, yeah, 64 guys would hit 30 or more. What's going on here? Well, this All-Star game has a chance to rival a 1971 game where six Hall of Famers hit home runs, highlighted by Reggie Jackson's shot on the roof in Detroit. With the exception of the World Series, this is baseball's biggest show. And every player here would like to do something special tonight. In fact, singles won't even count unless they drive in runs. And so I think tonight every player will go to the plate thinking, guess go for it. Well, that was the National League philosophy apparently last year in Texas. They had only three hits. All of them were solo homers. They won the game three to two. They say you that good pitching will stop good hitting. But well, there's an awful lot of hitting here. That's the story, Bob. And tonight, a pair of right-handers and Charles Nagy, an 11-game winner with the Indians. He's a he's a breaking ball type pitcher. Throws a lot of off-speed stuff. On the other side, you've got John Schmoltz. As a matter of fact, it's a rematch from Game Three of the World Series last year. Schmoltz at 14 and four, strictly power, great fastball, breaking ball, and a split-fingered fastball to go with it. And here is the lineup that John Schmoltz will face, and the change is Mo Vaughn of the Red Sox in. For the injured Frank Thomas, Thomas has a sprained left foot. He played through it in an important weekend series against the Indians and expects to be back in the lineup on Thursday when the second half of the season begins for the White Sox against Kansas City. But he is unlikely to even pinch hit tonight. He simply was introduced. So Bell will hit fourth and Vaughn starts at first base and bats fifth. The defense now behind Smoltz. Well, you'll have Dante Bichette in the outfield. Lance Johnson. You have Dante Bichette in right field, Lance Johnson in center, Barry Bonds in left, Chipper Jones at third, Barry Larkin, Craig Biggio, and McGriff on the right side, John Smoltz on the mound, and Mike Piazza behind the plate. And while we have a chance, here are the umpires. Randy Marsh of the National League will call balls and strikes, Larry McCoy from the American League at first, Charlie Relliford, National League at second, Joe Brinkman, American League at third, left field line Larry Poncino of the National League, and Chuck Merriweather of the American League will call the plays down the right field line. Muggy night, chance of rain, some fell earlier, game time temperature around 80. First time the game has been here in 20 years, appropriately in the bicentennial year of 1976, the vet played host to the game. Lofton likely to lead the American League in steals for the fifth straight time. And he's two for two lifetime against Smoltz. Got two hits against him in game three of the World Series. Flash bulbs popping all around the park on Smoltz's first pitch. Chipper Jones in close at third. Lofton a threat to drop a bunt. 
and a called strike moments ago the ceremonial first pitch and I thought we were going to take a look at it here but we'll wait until Lofton's at bat has ended. One one pitch they check it third he did not go around. Outfield shades him slightly to left. And he hits it up the middle and through for a base hit. So Lofton with his 42 steals. He's more than aggressive. He's often daring. He's aboard to start the game. The ceremonial first pitch. Five Philly Hall of Famers. Mike Schmidt, Robin Roberts, Richie Ashburn, Steve Carlton, and newly elected Jim Bunning. And all the American and National League catchers came out to be on the receiving end. Wade Boggs now in his 12th All-Star game, 11th in succession. He doesn't swing and miss often, Joe. No, and this is a perfect situation for the American League. Lofton can steal a base, and he's very successful against Smoltz in the World Series, and Boggs, perfect number two hitter. At age 38, Boggs hitting 331. Lofton not going, and a fastball high and away. Completely consistent career 334 hitter and within three points of that as he moves up on age 40 he needs a couple more productive seasons after this one to get 3000 career hits. He's going on the 1 1 pitch he had a tremendous jump and he's in there. You described it perfectly Bob he had a great jump on Smoltz who is, has a very slow delivery to the plate as you can see Piazza has not been successful this year throwing out base runners but Lofton had such a great jump he stole that on the pitcher not the catcher. I don't think Johnny Bench or Mickey Cochran no. would have gotten him but Piazza as you say has gone down only 14 of 95 poor percentage. Boggs now lifts one sky high and Chipper Jones calls. One out. On the other hand, you, the American League starting catcher, Ivan Rodriguez, is a tremendous thrower, one of the best in baseball. Well, I put him in the class of a Johnny Bench who Joe, uh, Joe saw many, many times, and I had the opportunity to play against. I don't think this guy takes a backseat to anybody in baseball. Piazza may be a little bit better offensively, but Rodriguez, as far as catching and throwing, I mean, he's unbelievable. He loves to throw to bases, picking guys off. He can take a picture out of a jam. He's tough. He really is. He's a great catcher. A strike to Alomar who flirted with 400 in fact topped it in early June but he's tailed off and down to 352 playing with a jammed ring finger on his left hand heard it diving head first into first base a few days ago against the Red Sox one and one for Robbie all star game number seven one with the Padres five in a row with the Blue Jays this is first as an Oriole. Fastball making Piazza's glove pop. A ball and two strikes. Smoltz at age 29 is appearing in his fourth All-Star game. The loser as a 22 year old in the 1989 game at Anaheim. Leads the majors in wins though he has lost his last three decisions. This ball is hit hard toward the gap in right center field and coming on to make the catch is Lance Johnson tagging at third is Lofton and he sprints in there. So Lofton moves up from second to third but with two out. Here's that little charge by Lance Johnson. You won't find too many guys who will do this. I mean it's got to be a guy with speed who will tag and go to third. You don't want to take a chance on getting thrown out. Johnson throws the ball pretty well. He got to that one quickly but Lofton as you see in there easily and a good play by Jones to knock down that throw and stop it. Albert Bell. Booed yesterday during the workout. Booed during the introductions. Booed although at lower decibels as he walked to the plate here in the first. 
you would think that a guy would get tired of being booed Bob and maybe do something about his image. I don't know if Albert thinks he has an image. <laughs> well outside of Cleveland he might be regarded as the man Will Rogers never met. I know one thing he's meeting some serious gas from Smoltz here in the opening inning. One one pitch. Couldn't catch up with it. Players in the National League will tell you that John Smoltz has the best stuff of all the starters on the Atlanta Braves. And we get a look at this hard slider diving away from Albert Bell. No chance there. He has more margin for error than any of the other starters. The other ones are great finesse pitchers. And it holds at one and two. Bell has 27 home runs, but just two in his last 22 games, and his batting average has dipped beneath 300 at 293. Lofton a third with two down on the top of the first, and another one two pitch from Smoltz to Bell. Struck him out. Lofton opens with a single, steals a base, but Smoltz strands him after half an inning at the vet. No score. Yeah. Oh, on the opening? That's all right. That's all right. I'll never speak to you again. He's throwing some gas, man. Oh, Jesus. He's, he's, he's got the best Woo. stuff. You know. Man. See, that's, that slider was about 88, yeah, it looked like. Jesus. Him. Last like second movement. Was, yeah. Last second. That's that's what he does great. It's, it's last second movement. Late movement. Yep. You know, this Lofton, he, he doesn't care what the game situation is. He no. just takes no, the base. He's exciting, yeah. though. You know, well, it is exciting. And he's he's exciting. He should. But I mean, he, He'll try to go to third with two right. with like oh, the yeah. best hit exactly. on the team up. Yeah, Anytime, no. man, he don't care. I mean, he's got, you know, he can do it. He's got the speed to do it. Some other guy who doesn't run that well isn't going to do it. But, I mean, he, the guy's exciting. What the hell? What are we coming out to, Andy? Okay. Yep. <laughs> gotcha. The National League has won the last two All-Star games. They lead the series, which dates to 1933, 39-26, with a tie thrown in. And here's their lineup put together by manager Bobby Cox. Lance Johnson of the Mets moves into the starting lineup when Tony Gwynn had to beg off with an injury, followed by Larkin, Bonds, and McGriff. Piazza, the league's leading hitter, real rarity for a catcher. Bichette, Jones, Biggio, and Smoltz. Who is, should he have to bat, a good hitting pitcher, as are most of the Braves starters? Lance Johnson leads the majors with 13 triples. Swings at the first pitch, slaps it to left. Bell comes on and can't get there. Skids to block it. Johnson speeds for second, daring play. And in there safely. This is what Lance Johnson does best. He swings at the first pitch quite often, but actually two good plays here. A good play by Albert Bell. This ball is smoked in the gap in the left center field. Now this is actually a good play by Albert Bell just to keep the ball from going all the way to the wall. Now he gets up and throws to second. He actually makes it a close play, but just good hustle by Lance Johnson beats the throw. So good play by Albert who's not known for his defense, but Lance Johnson is known for his hustle. 
Here's eight-time All-Star and reigning National League MVP Barry Larkin. Up and in from Nagy for a ball, even as fast as Johnson is. If Lance Johnson isn't thinking extra base hit from the moment he leaves the batter's box, no chance. No chance. You're right. And a called strike from Nagy. You know, if that ball gets by Bell, too, Joe, yeah. it's run all day for Johnson. That might have been an inside the park home run. Johnson dancing off second as Nagy delivers. Hit to the right side. The runner moves up as Alomar throws to Vaughn to retire Larkin. Larkin always does the little things. That's why he was the most viral player in the league last year. He will give himself up, hit the ball to the right side as he did there to move Johnson over to third. Well, Albert Belluk is not exactly gold glove quality, but a good play here. No, I'll tell you what, a lot of credit to goes to Albert Bell for the play right there. But you know one thing that people don't know about Albert Bell he's got a great arm. I mean this guy makes some good throws from time to time. I know once in a while he butchers a ball in the outfield but he can throw. This will get a run home. Vaughn to Nagy covering RBI for Bonds on the ground out. One nothing National League. Well, that sort of tells you that Mike Hargrove feels his team is going to score a lot of runs. They just gave that run away in the first inning. So Johnson doubles and comes around on a pair of advancing ground outs. And McGriff bats with the bases empty and two outs. Strike one in a tailspin just 17 of his last 100. And he like Bell has slumped beneath 300 at 296 with 20 home runs. Checked the third and Joe Brinkman said yes he committed so it's 0 and 2 to McGriff. Well here's that last check swing or not a check swing by McGriff and a good call by Brinkman it looked like. We always get a second chance up here but not downstairs. Inside one and two. Joe how many times have you had a check swing and, <laughs> and didn't think you went around all the time. Probably right? 99 percent <laughs> of the time. <laughs> Didn't miss by much. Nagy making his second All Star appearance. Pitched for the American League in the 92 game at San Diego. 11 and 2 for the year. Fastball up and in, and after being ahead 0 and 2, now the count is full. Nagy's ERA is 3.53. That might seem unspectacular, but in this year of increased offense, especially in the DH. American League it's the second best ERA for a starter behind Juan Guzman of the Blue Jays struck him out a run comes home and after one the National League leads it one zip yep testing one two three he's coming down okay you're going to give me a few questions here, right? Bob gave me some good ones. What are you doing? You doing Piazza's dad? No, you're doing Bobby Cox. Turn on that light. Yep. What are you you're going to first batter or uh... okay well I'll have Bob throw it here because I haven't been uh, identified yet right I got Bob, Bob would throw it okay. come on, right. Johnny. then if that's the case come out on Smoltz. Can we come out on Smoltz then? Okay. Oh, no, no. 
I understand. We've got some good ones though, and he'll be good. Not long end. John Smoltz lost his first decision of the year then reeled off 14 straight victories but comes into the All Star game on a three game losing streak and in those three starts he's given up 19 runs but he has very good stuff off the first inning tonight. And to start the second he'll face Mo Vaughn of the Red Sox. Who rips one over McGriff and down the line for extra bases. Chased into the corner by Bichette. Who gets it back in as Vaughn trots it with a double. Well, Vaughn tuned up for this All Star game in a game you broadcast, Joe, on Sunday night in Baltimore with two Titanic home runs. And, and he wasted last, no time jumping on the first one here. The last being a ninth inning game winning home run. I mean, he just rips this ball past Freddie McGriff. It wasn't that the ball was over his head, the ball got past McGriff before he could jump up and down into the corner. Actually, a good play there. By Bichette just to hold him to a double, although Mo Vaughn, of course, not known for his speed. But they call him the hit dog in Boston. Maurice Samuel Vaughn. I like Mo. He don't like Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne Rodriguez. At age 24, he's a five-time All-Star. And his batting average has gone up. He's always been excellent defensively. His batting average has gone up every year. Top 300 for the first time last year. And as you see, he's at 313 now. I was talking about him earlier, Bob. He's a great young talent. He really is. He hasn't put the numbers up yet that some of the great catchers in the game have. But this guy, this guy is really something. Reaches for one, pops it into shallow right. Biggio back from second for the catch. And we go downstairs to the National League dugout. Jim Gray, Jim. All right. Thank you very much Bob Costas a very unique and rare opportunity to talk to manager Bobby Cox while he is managing Bobby let me ask you are there a lot of signals and strategy that goes on in this game or is it more of a sandlot game. Well it's not strictly not a sandlot game we go over a lot of signs in our meeting yesterday we went over you know the squeeze the hit and run the bond the whole works but you know these guys are so talented and they all such are great hitters you, you don't employ too many things just to manufacture one run but if we get late in the ball game, we may have to do that then. You know, we'll do it. But this is unique. You know, normally we don't talk to the press during the ball game. Jim. As we see Cal Ripken Jr. now up at bat, let me ask you, is it more important to win this game or is it more important to get everybody into the game? I told our players it's a combination. You know, we want to win it, and this is one of the few really, I think, professional all-star games that, you know, where the players really go out there and battle their rear ends off and try to win because it's just not that way anymore. In football and the NBA, it's just a little bit different. People understand that, but it, it, it's still very competitive and um, in baseball so we want to win it. Now the starters can stay in for three innings and then you start making some changes which starters might we expect to see longer. Well John Smoltz is only going to go two. we got Kevin Brown up now and he's the fourth hitter next inning and uh, we'll probably pinch hit for sure but this will be uh, the uh, the only the last inning for John. Uh, uh, we want to make sure we get most of the pitchers in it's the only way we can do it and Kevin's good for only one inning he pitched last Saturday and he can go the one and uh, you know well, I'm anxious to see him. All right Bobby we appreciate you taking the time with us. Let's go back upstairs to Bob Costas. Thanks Jim and Bobby 3 0 pitch ripped in a likely green light if he sees one he likes but he takes a strike. Vaughn at second one out top of the second one nothing National League. If you're keeping track the streak is at twenty two thirty nine and of course the All Star game doesn't count toward it. Hit hard left center field but over his bonds. Vaughn plays it halfway and there's the second out. You what was your longest streak. Yellow right down my back buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Against a guy like Smoltz anyway I'll tell you that. Now here's that last ball hit by Ripken a fastball he didn't he didn't hit it all that well he hit it off the end it didn't sound good when he hit it. Little fly ball to left. Bonds had an easy play for the second out. 
indirectly, Bob, we see the difference between the American League and the National League. When the guy let off for a double with the National League, Barry Larkin hit the ball to the right side, moved him along where he could have scored on a ground ball. They did not do that with the American League All-Stars. They're more of a big bomb type team. How big? A 30 <laughs> home run guy yeah. hits eight. That's yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's big. <laughs> He's on a pace to hit 58. Top 20 only once in his whole career prior to this season. Hit hard McGriff behind the bag. His teammate Smoltz covers, and they're out of the second inning. After one and a half, it remains 1 0 National League. What was your longest streak, Joe? 100 and. All right. No, how many how many games you hit it? Oh, hitting. Yeah. Probably 19. You know. I walk too much. I, you know, there'd be I. If I didn't get, you know, I go over two, yeah. over three, and my streak's over. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Ripken hit that ball harder than he I did. did too. It didn't sound good. You know well, what? The hurt, hurt, I, but I, I don't know if it's did. the vantage point here or what, but. It but didn't sound good. Yeah, though, you when he caught hit it. it you know? I, he caught the sound. See, I was like you. I thought he hit it well. I thought the ball was going to be in the in, in the, the gap. gap. Yeah, but if you, he caught the sound. I really didn't. Because I. And you could tell Ripken was disgusted when he came out of the box. Yeah, but I thought he hit it. Yeah, right, right down around the end. It really yeah. didn't, didn't sound that good. Changes? No. I tell you, Albert Bell's got a hell of an arm, man. I mean, you, yeah. you know, when you watch that guy play day after day, you see him a lot. He can throw. Well, the the, the point is, he's a guy. If he wants to play, you, yeah. you know, he can play. He's really not bad. No, I mean, you know, exactly. there's plays no, he's no, going to no. butcher. I know that, but no, I mean, but I mean, when I've he makes up his mind, right? When he makes up his mind to yeah. play, I've seen him make some yeah. great plays. Uh, and that, I'm telling you, that was a hell of a play, play right it there. really was. Yeah. Knocked that ball down. Yeah. 